Okay, can Ron hear me now? Okay, there you go, Bob. Oh, good. Sorry for the technical difficulties. I, it's it's all good in my 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 mind. We're we're fine. I do want to check something with you though, because I tried to get this one video to uh, go into my PowerPoint. It's only like five tiles, six tiles, because I just I like to talk. But I have two videos, and one I couldn't get except we don't recognize the address. So I have to stop and then go. So I want to do a quick practice with you if you're okay with that. I'm okay with that. Go to it. Okay. So uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to share my screen and I'm going to share my PowerPoint. That looks good. Uh, and there we go. So if I start talking, I introduce myself. I go to the next tile. I said, we're going to discuss different methods of travel, car, bus, train, airplane. I'll include a couple of sideline stuff in there. And then here's the one that I could not get to go in. So yeah. what, I, what I need to do at this point is probably uh, stop share, share again, I'm just ready to go. All right. Do you see this uh, whole YouTube page? I do not. You do not. Okay. You hit share again. You got you got your sh share screen open. That the video won't play automatically if you share. No. If you're not if it's not you're not sharing it. No. Okay. All right. Hold on. If you're just playing it. It won't work. It'll it, it'll play. I, but then I, got you. I got you now. I, I I hit the wrong button. All right. So. Yes, now I see it. Okay, and I, I want to share the sound. Right. And then I'm going to hit. Um... Driving is a privilege millions of Americans enjoy. Well. Not every driver okay. travels with safety in mind. No Here. Are... Okay. Oh. You love coffee. Most likely, you can't even imagine starting your day without a large cup of it. I don't, think, you love, I don't yeah. think the commercial will help. He doesn't I'm like. Skip the ad and then I want to. tips to help you. Right. Right there. Okay. And hopefully, the ad will not show up later. <laughs> even if it does, it's it's not an issue. Well, you know, all get, we all get a good laugh. It's not a problem. You know, I, I tell you the truth. I, I teach a, a defensive driving course. Um, in fact, I have to teach it tomorrow and Thursday night, and it goes from six to nine, two nights in a row. Mm -hmm. And between someone coming by and making loud noise, or uh, I'm at my dad's house right now, the dog coming in and jumping on my lap, or I told you, it's happen, all fine. And everybody kind of just rolls with it. It's just that's what we do. All right. So the next thing I want to try is that if we have this going. And um, if I hmm. all right, when I when I put it down here, do you see the whole tile or do you see the whole screen with the tiles on the on the left? I see the tiles on the left. You do. Okay. Yes. Uh, because you didn't, it's not, you didn't hit present. Yeah, no, no, I, I did. And I went back. I'm trying to figure out. Will you be talking at all about, I'm not, not necessarily as a doctor, but um, anything about COVID travel, what we should be aware of, not aware of domestic as well as international? Well, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about planning and and looking into that stuff before you go. Uh, right now, I know that everybody is requiring masks uh, in, for travel, uh, airplanes, buses, uh, trains, all that. The only time you don't need one is in your own car or, <clears throat> you know, a private vehicle of some sorts. Um, I am going to talk about. Um, A website that you can go to mm -hmm. and actually find what uh, travel, uh, what it is in, in your destination. You mean health wise? Yes. 
Okay, that that's a good thing for us to share for you to share. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let me let me just double check this for a second. See if I can find it. I know it. We had it. Triple A travel map. Let's see what it is. Plan your road trip. Triple A open roads with triple A travel. That means uh, COVID. We had. Um, hmm. <clears throat> Here, uh, here it is. Okay. I'm going to paste this into my last. Uh, yeah, this is only a, this is only in North America, though. That's not. Yeah. You know, all right. So that's not going to help. So you, want, so you want questions along the way or people put them in chat or just at the end? What's your. What's uh, okay. Your, I would appreciate it if you can monitor the chat. All right. And when I, uh, you could stop. Say, hey, by the way, I just got a question. You can stop me anytime. All right, fine. Okay. And at, the, at the end, um, if people at the end, I will just open it up. If there's any final questions that um, people still want to ask. The, yeah, absolutely. In fact, my last tile says um, it says uh, recap slash questions. So. Oh, all right. There you go. Yeah. Um, all right, so I have one issue that I'm trying to figure out here. Take your time. Um, maybe you could help me out. I want to present, but I want to leave my bottom set of controls free so I could pull up my notes while I'm talking. Wow. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. That, 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 that's a two screen issue. Um, yeah, I so know. Presenting uh, and then have to look, in, look at another screen. I'm not sure you can do that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, all right. Let me see if I could, if I have a moment to do it right now, as we, as we, as we're sitting here. You do. You do have. You do have a moment. You certainly have time. Okay. Yeah. This will be. This will be fine. Okay. Hello, Debbie. Good to see you, Debbie. How are you? Good to see you. We have no sound, so that's okay. You can join us. <laughs> oh, no, I hear you. you. Can you hear me now? Okay, great. All right, super job. Well, thanks for joining us, and we'll have more joining us as few, in the next few minutes. And uh, you can plan your vacation, or you can plan visiting relatives if you haven't visited, or anything else. Uh, No. You know, I used to be better at this, but I'm not. <laughs> there is a presenter mode where you could see your notes while you're presenting. Ah, uh, that I think that is in in PowerPoint or um, I don't know if it's in Google Slides, PowerPoint. I remember seeing that. Yeah, this is this is I'm on PowerPoint. Oh, then yeah, there is a mode for that. I can't tell you off the top of my head. What yeah. It uh, notes. All right, hold on. Hmm. Yes, there is an option in. in there should, there and should be. There is. I just yeah. can't figure it out. <laughs> ah, it's been a while. I, I got to be honest with you, Bob. I am not a big PowerPoint guy. Uh-huh. Uh, I'm, I'm, uh, Let's do this slideshow, custom slideshow uh, from, from the beginning. 
set up slideshow, rehearse, record slideshow. Um, hmm. It is one of the options. I don't remember which. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out where it is. Uh, hide slide, we sh keep slides updated, please. Automatic presenter, always use. Um, hmm. Uh, oh, this is really aggravating me now. Um, okay, so let's. I can't. I can't. I'm sure. I'm, I'm just going to have to wing it. Okay. That'd be fine. <clears throat> um, hmm. I don't know. I just. Uh, so, in one minute, it'll be eight o'clock. Okay. Uh, this program is being recorded, and we will take this program and put it on our website, on our YouTube channel, in okay. case anyone would like to go back and view it. So it's a part of our library of presentations, just for you to know that we are being recorded to protect, yes. to protect the innocent. <clears throat> Full disclosure. Got it. So we're gonna welcome uh, our participants uh, to this program. And uh, we're going to introduce Ron Esposito in a moment. And um, in his presentation, he's requesting that if anyone has a question along the way, you put it in chat and then I will share that with uh, Ron as we go. And we will, uh, at the end, there'll be question opportunity for questions, but he's going to try and present his program with um, out interruption, um, um, but I'm sure that your participation with questions is uh, encouraged. So let me introduce, well, we'll leave it another minute because it's still eight on the nose. And uh, as, as it is uh, not unusual for people not to be that accurate, but uh, there, there will be others that will join us. So this is a part of the Temple Israel series of uh, eclectic programs on varied interests and various topics. Um, and we're very happy to have Ron Esposito from AAA um, joining us tonight and sharing as a travel expert um, some of the basics as well as some of the things that we don't give great thought to. And I know he'll have resources for us to uh, use, uh, especially during this uh, pandemic, uh, as we hope the pandemic continues to diminish, but with all the variants, we don't know what happens next, or is what's happening next. But people are traveling. We want you to know about all about that and how to prepare, travel safely, as well as domestically and internationally. And uh, I know this is a changing scenario. So Ron's going to give you the give you the 22nd of June uh, presentation. Um, so let me introduce Ron, and you can. Get your share screen up and say welcome to everyone and uh, welcome Ron Esposito, travel expert from AAA. All right, thank you, uh, Bob. Uh, my name is Ron Esposito. I am with AAA. I am actually a retired law enforcement officer uh, and I am a part of public affairs. I'm a traffic safety specialist. Uh, I also do uh, a lot of other uh, webinars uh, like um, whether to buy or lease things to know about insurance and travel. So tonight, uh, what I'd like to do is I'd like to discuss how to travel, how uh, to travel safely, both uh, domestically and abroad. Okay, so I'm gonna share my screen uh, with a PowerPoint uh, that I have.
Okay. All right. As I said, my name is Ron Esposito. And we're, the, the topic tonight is how do I travel safely? Uh, well, there are different, uh, definitely uh, many different modes of travel. Um, we have uh, cars. Uh, also in cars, there are motorcycles, um, other uh, means of transportation like bicycles. Uh, you could take bike trips where you actually go to a destination and take bike trips along the coast every you know, 20, 30 miles a day, stay at different locations, uh, that type of thing. Uh, there's also bus and train, which I, I kind of think are very similar. Um, a bus may um, be a little bit different because it's going through roadways in different towns and, and you get a different view uh, than from a train. But uh, busing or training can be very, very relaxing and it can be very enjoyable uh, because you don't have to do any of the driving. And uh, on buses and trains, uh, Bob and I had talked earlier, uh, you're still required to wear masks unless it's a private uh, coach type of situation. Um, airplanes, uh, whether domestic or foreign um, abroad, uh, we, we need to wear our masks and, and, and they have not yet said that they are going to require vaccination passports. Uh, I don't think that that's going to come for planes uh, but that brings me to cruises, which I'm not really going to talk about too much because cruises are kind of, you go and you do what's on the boat, then you come home and you get back in your car and, 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 and uh, uh, that's more of a, of a, of a contained uh, atmosphere. Uh, I'm going to be talking about more about, more about traveling and, and going into cities and, and that type of stuff. Um, so cruises are, are, are trying to require um, vaccination passports. I, I believe that there are some states that are fighting it, uh, especially it comes to mind Florida, uh, that they don't want their um, uh, citizens to be subject uh, to that kind of uh, thing. Uh, so uh, that being said, <clears throat> I have a video that I wanna play. And here it is. Driving is a privilege millions of Americans enjoy, but not every driver travels with safety in mind. Here are AAA's tips to help you drive safely and with confidence. It is the driver's responsibility to keep eyes, mind, and body fully focused on the task of driving. Assign a passenger to be the designated texter, talker, and navigator. If traveling alone, pull over to a safe location to use your cell phone or navigation device. Get seven to nine hours of rest and avoid driving during hours when you usually sleep. Take a break every 100 miles or two hours. If you feel tired while driving, pull over to a safe location and take a 20 to 30 minute nap. While driving, be aware of your surroundings and use good judgment. Map your route and time it appropriately so you're not stuck in unfamiliar places late at night if an emergency does arise. Watch your gas tank level and plan to fill up when needed. Running out of gas is easily avoidable. When you stop for gas or to rest, take a cell phone and keep it with you at all times. With just a few precautions and a little planning, you can make the road a safer place for yourself and other drivers. For thousands of how-to and advice videos on... Let me just make sure I hold on for one second because it, uh, I'm bouncing back and forth, I apologize. Okay, so let me go back to our uh, shared screen um, and that will be, Okay, so um, this slide here, here shows a car uh, completely crazily packed and some motorcycles that have travel bags and they're on a road trip. Uh, now, 
preparation and planning is key to any kind of safe travel, whether it's by car or bus, train, airplane, cruise, whatever it may be. So the first thing I'm going to say is that for us to have a safe trip, our vehicle must be in safe operating condition to start. We should make sure that our tires are properly inflated. Uh, we all know uh, that, or if we don't know, you can find your proper tire inflation pressure uh, in the driver's door jam. Uh, it's usually posted there on a sticker. Having proper pressure in your tires is very important because it saves gas mileage, it saves wear and tear on your tire, and it keeps you connected to the road. Uh, so that's very important. We wanna check or change our oil before we go on a long trip if it's been a while since we had our oil changed. Uh, we wanna check our cooling, uh, make sure that that container is leveled, is, is, is at the cold level before you start. Uh, we wanna fill up, we wanna make sure that we carry supplies. Uh, if it's cold weather, we wanna make sure that in our trunk, we have a cold weather kit, including a blanket, a hat, gloves, and an extra heavy uh, uh, cold uh, weather coat so that God forbid we do stall or, or have some kind of mechanical problems and we have to wait for a tow truck, uh, we'll stay warm and keep ourselves preserved while we, while we wait for help. Uh, so snacks, water, these types of things, things that, that you should keep. Uh, if you have a cooler, you can put it in the trunk, fill it with the items you need. And like the video said, we wanna stop every 100 miles, maybe 120 miles, every two hours and just take a break. We wanna get up. We wanna unfixate our eyes on just the road. We wanna see uh, the surroundings, give our eyes a rest, give our fatigued body from driving for that long a rest. Walk around, stretch. Um, I, a friend of mine and I, we used to travel to Florida and we used to get out and kick the soccer ball around for about 15 or 20 minutes. Anything like that is good. Now, another uh, thing that we want to make sure that we uh, are prepared for is our gas stops and overnight stops. So we this we want to plan all in advance before we even get into the car and turn the key. We want to make sure that we know if we're going for 450 miles that our gas tank gets us about 260 miles. We're going to have to stop somewhere between, you know, um, Alexandria, Virginia and Fredericksburg, something to that nature. Uh, so we want to plan where we're going to stop. If we're going to stop overnight, we want to look about halfway on the map and we want to call uh, some hotels and try to get a reservation near the highway so that you have a planned stop, everything. Um, uh, there's nothing left to chance. I uh, had a friend of mine, uh, the same person I went to Florida with many times, he was driving up uh, by himself, went to get a hotel. They were all sold out for 150 miles longer than he wanted to drive. He finally got one, but he was really fatigued and I was on the phone with him for about a half hour trying to talk him through it. Uh, it can be very upsetting if, if, if things don't go smoothly. So it's very, very important to plan thoroughly before we go, okay? So included in that planning, uh, is going to be uh, who's coming with us, what supplies we need for, for our passengers, uh, are we going to rotate drivers, how are we going to handle the people that are with us, and if we're driving by ourselves, then we're, it's, it's a little easier because we don't have to worry about other people. Uh, you have to consider bathroom stops, you have to consider food, uh, stopping for, for meals. Uh, so all these things should be planned ahead. Now, some of them like food, if you're traveling during regular day hours, is fine because there's, there's places all along the highway. Uh, but I can tell you from traveling along the Eastern Seaboard a lot that in Maryland, other than the actual rest stops, there's no convenient place to stop for food. You get off the highway, it's five, six miles off out of your way to get to a place to eat and then get back on the highway. And uh, there's a lot of other gaps like that too. So planning things out uh, is definitely, uh, definitely the thing to do. Now in the video also, they talked about driving when you're normally awake. I worked early morning shift. When I was driving for a long distance, I would start at five o'clock in the morning because that's when I left for my shift. 
So I would, I'd stop at five and then I'd drive to five, uh, maybe six o'clock that evening. Uh, again, 12 hours, 14 hours uh, is a little long. We wanna try to keep it 12 and under. When you get to 18 hours of straight driving, that's considering breaks too, but when you get about 18 hours in, uh, you could actually have a blood alcohol content experience of a 0.05 because of drowsiness and because of fatigue. If you drive for 24 hours straight, which is highly not recommended, it's, a, it's equal to the impairment of a 0 0.10 of alcohol. Uh, so with that being said, uh, driving more than 12 hours is not um, uh, advisable. Driving 18 hours is, is really, really dangerous and 24 hours is just uh, horrific. Um, there was a guy about eight years ago, uh, drove home from Texas, uh, 30 plus hours straight, uh, got about 12, 14 miles from his home, fell asleep, ran off the road and killed a 12 or 13 year old girl. I can't remember exactly. Uh, he ended up going to jail for that. And they proved it because of his cell uh, pings and his credit card use and his stops. So they did a timeline and he, I believe admitted that he had been driving since, but without, without more than a, a 15 or 20 minute cat nap. So this is something that's real, something that if God forbid uh, something horrible happens, you could be held accountable. So again, planning, making sure that we have uh, control over everything except traffic because uh, that, that is your enemy. So um, I don't know if you guys use uh, Google Maps or Waze, these are, are great ways. Uh, you can put in the, a day or two before and actually choose the day that you're going to travel and find out what the traffic is normally like and how long it's gonna take you to travel that distance. It may say uh, six to eight hours or six to seven hours and 20 minutes. So you can plan. Uh, all the information that you gather is, is good for, for uh, your safety. Now, um, there are people on the road who do experience road rage. And I would not do you justice or do this webinar justice if I didn't discuss it. There are two types of aggressive drivers. One is just the aggressive driver who thinks he's got a sports car and likes to bob and weave and uh, ride people's tails and tailgate and, and, and those types of things, use the shoulder to pass, these types of things. That's an aggressive driver. A person with road rage has one specific element that the aggressive driver doesn't have and that he is angry or his anger is directed at a specific victim. And if that's you, it could be very, very, very uh, intimidating and it can be very upsetting, uh, but there's a couple of easy things that we could do to uh, kind of soften that, kind of get through this. And one is, is never make eye contact with somebody who has road rage. Never, never, never make eye contact and acknowledge that he's yelling or screaming or whatever he may, may be doing. So that's number one. Number two, move to the right. Try to go a little bit slower. Let him pass, let him go on his way. He's obviously had a bad day or is just in a really bad mood and he needs to get by you and you're blocking him or maybe you, you cut him off inadvertently, not intentionally, uh, but he's just upset. So if the person stays behind us and tailgating us, it could be advantageous just to pull off to the shoulder. Uh, if the person stops behind you, we do not want to engage and we do not want to get involved in any kind of altercation. So immediately if they pull in behind you, especially if they get out of their vehicle, out of Dodge, get out of there, get back on the road. Again, stay in the right lane, go slow at the speed limit, say 55, do 45 or 50. Make it so he doesn't have any more patience to stay behind you. If he still does, then uh, you could call 911 
You're allowed to do that while you're driving, if it's an emergency. If you have passengers, you get one of them to call 911. If not, it's always good to go into a place of safety where there's a lot of people. It could be a uh, visiting center, it could be a gas station, it could be a, a shopping center, uh, that type of thing. Again, we never get out of our car, we just pull in and hope that they pull off. Uh, if you have a passenger and you can navigate to a local police department, that's a great idea too. You get into the police department, most of these people will not even get that far. But if he follows you into the police department, at least if you're on the phone, you can say, the guy is right behind me. I just pulled into your department and they'll come out and that's it. it it'll be over. Uh, the one thing we never want to do, and this is not so much for our traveling, um, but, it, but it could be where we're staying or our home. We never want to go there. Uh, because if we do that, now this person who's uh, enraged with us knows where we're staying or knows where we live. So we don't want to do that. Okay. Um, auto uh, driving, uh, we want to avoid distractions. Uh, no talking on the phone, uh, if you can avoid it, even hands-free. Uh, the difference between handheld and hand-free is minimal. It's not the physical act of holding the phone, it's the mental uh, part of the phone call or the cognitive uh, distractions that takes our mind off of driving. So it's very, very important have somebody else in the car do it. Uh, if, if you have to do it uh, for an emergency purposes, that's fine. Uh, if, if there's an incoming call and you wanna check it for, for a minute, uh, you know, hands-free, I would advise if you don't have to, don't do it because that's what AAA uh, believes and they've done studies. Uh, but distractions are not just our phones, billboards, construction sites, police activity, uh, all kinds of things around us distract us. Drinking a cup of coffee technically is a distraction. It's an act that takes your either uh, visually, physically, or mentally off of driving. Now, drinking coffee while you're driving is probably a very, very, very small distraction. Listening to music would be along the same lines. It's a very, very small distraction, but that's not gonna make that big a difference. We don't wanna uh, get involved in text messages, or texting through even infotainment systems. Um, we wanna to try to focus on the road. Uh, you should always have a view of all the vehicles around you. You should be rotating your eyes from the, your mirror to your left. I mean, from your mi middle, a rear view mirror back on the road, to your left, back on the road, to your right, back on the road, glances, quarter of a second. We should also, uh, very interestingly, we should take our mirrors and tilt them out a little bit to eliminate our blind spots, especially if we're gonna be on the highway. Now, I know this has happened to me and I'm sure it's happened to everybody here, is that you go to change a lane and all of a sudden you hear a horn, you go, I didn't even see him. Well, it's very, very easy to set your mirrors like that. And I advised you to do that, even yourselves for just daily driving, but more so on the highway. Is you take your head, lean it up against the glass, move your mirror out so you can just barely see the side of your car. When you sit back up, you shouldn't be able to see the side of your car. That mirror will now see directly into that blind spot. Same thing with the other side, you lean your head in line with the rear view mirror, you move the right side mirror out so you can just see the side of your car. Now, because it's convex, it probably you will still be able to see a little bit of the side of your car, but if that mirror is out there, you'll eliminate that blind spot. Now, those are very, very important, right? No distractions, get our mirrors, keep a, a 360 uh, degree view. Always leave minimum of three seconds of following distance between you and the car in front of you. That means when the rear end of his car passes a line or a pole, one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi before you hit that spot. That's the minimum. That's a safe distance to be, able, excuse me, a safe distance to be able to stop if something like a, a deer or something comes out, runs out of the road and everybody hits their brakes hard. Also, you should be looking ahead at least a half mile because if everybody up in front of you, brakes are going on, pop, 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 and the guy in front of you is not slowing down, he's gonna have to slam on his brakes. If you notice that and you slow down and give more cushion between you and the car in front of you, 
you'll have a ample room and time to stop without having to engage in emergency stop, maybe possibly lose control or maybe running into the vehicle in front of you. Now, these are just basic um, defensive driving tactics. And if you practice those, you can operate that vehicle safely and get to your destination safely. Unless anybody wants, um, I, I, does anybody want me to talk about motorcycles at all? We good? All right. So let's talk about busing and, uh, and trains. Um, now, a lot of trains um, are very, 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 very safe. Their, their crash percentage is so small uh, that it's a very, very sa safe way to travel. Uh, it's quicker than a bus uh, because they don't have to deal with traffic. They could do 80, 90, 110 miles an hour on some stretches where a bus is really confined to that 65, 70 mile an hour zone, depending on what state you are. So trains are a good option. Also, what's nice about the train is you can get up and walk through the train, go to a car for a cocktail or a bite to eat. Uh, so it's very relaxing. The problem is, is that with bus or train is that we don't have a vehicle for when we get there. So we'll have to rent a car. So that's a consideration. Uh, it may be, uh, if it's just two people, it might be cheaper to get on a train and go than it is to actually pay for your gas, your mileage, your tolls and all those things too. Uh, but renting a car may cost you more. So these are all things, again, in those planning stages, we wanna think about these things. We wanna think about uh, how much is our budget? How much do we wanna spend? And does it make sense for us? It's a personal uh, thing. It's not a uh, one size fits all. So it's, a, it's really about what's good for you. Buses are very comfortable. Uh, they're great touring because you can go to a, a city, get off in that city, spend a day, get back on a bus, go to another city, spend a day there. Um, and, and, and if you do trip like that, it's nice because you can Uber where you need to go and you don't have to pay for a rental car. Uh, trains are similar to that too, but usually when you get on a train, it's one destination. Um, but a bus, you can actually make reservations for a whole tour. Uh, again, what's nice about it is that we don't have the fatigue or the, uh, the, the driving uh, requirement, uh, so we could relax. We could begin our vacation while we're traveling. Busing normally takes a little bit longer than trains. Trains uh, take a lot longer than airplanes. So uh, next we'll go to airplanes. Flying gets us places very quickly compared to the miles that we have to cover. There are some very, very positive things about flying. Again, their crash rate is minimal. You have a, a higher chance of uh, walking out in front of a bus and getting killed than you do uh, getting hurt or killed in an airplane accident. So that it's very, very safe. It's convenient. You can make reservations in advance and usually save some money, which is a nice uh, thing to do. If it's a last minute trip, you might pay extra, but if you need to get there, it's the quickest and safest uh, direct way to go. So a couple of things we need to know. What kind of identification do we need to travel? Uh, soon, it's been postponed twice now to October of 22. Uh, we'll need what they call a uh, real ID or our passport to travel domestically. We always need our passport to travel outside the country. So if you don't have a passport, uh, know this, it takes anywhere from three to four months uh, to get it renewed or to get a new one. Uh, sometimes you can rush it overnight it, uh, pay, I think it's another 60 or $80 on top of the 130 or 40 that it costs and you can get it quicker, but that even still takes three weeks. So last minute passport um, uh, attempts are, are very futile and, and almost unless you wanna drive to where they have a place and do it in the place, um, you'll have to make sure that you do it way ahead of time. Six months is recommended before your passport expires to apply for a new one. So you need a passport. 
you're going to need uh, to decide what you're taking. If you're taking one large bag that you're going to check, all of your bigger items that have liquids in them, like your uh, aerosol cans, your um, um, some medications, um, shampoo, conditioner, those things, they should all go in your main check bag. Uh, because on uh, a carry-on, uh, you're only allowed one gallon size plastic bag filled with as many as you can. It used to be only four, I believe, uh, but now you can take just about as many as you want of 3.4 ounce uh, milliliter, uh, I mean, um, sorry, 3.4 ounces uh, or 100 milliliter bottle of liquids. That's the largest you're allowed to carry on. Uh, and I'm just gonna share this experience. I was coming back from out of the country. I had a uh, cologne bottle that was four ounces. It was less than half full. And going there, I had no issue, but coming back, the foreign country said, nope, this is a four ounce bottle. And they took my cologne and threw it right in the garbage. So be prepared for that. Know where you're going and what the customs there and just try to over protect yourself. If you're going to a country um, uh, abroad, you should do some research before A, you decide to go and before you go. Uh, have an idea of what the culture is. Have an idea of whether they speak English or not. If you don't speak the language, this could be an issue. And maybe it's more advantageous to go through a travel uh, agent or a tour than it is to go on your own, all right? Uh, know ahead of time whether you need to wear masks in public restaurants. Uh, every country has a different set of rules. Um, Bob and I were talking earlier and. And I, we had a map, it was a COVID map. It's still there, it's AAA uh, COVID map and you can go and click on a state and it'll give you the current status of that state, uh, but there's nothing for global. Um, so it's really up to you to do the research. We wanna make sure that you know what kind of uh, electric converter you need. Um, I have a multi one. Um, and another thing, if you're going to rent a car when you're in another country, very, very, very important that you buy the insurance. There have been nightmare stories of people who crashed a car and got charged thousands and thousands of dollars for every day that vehicle was not in use that your insurance will never cover. So it's very, very, very important to get uh, that coverage. Also, if you're going into a country, you might wanna consider buying travel health insurance. I know it sounds weird, but the reason is, is that if you have an issue in another country, they don't take your insurance at all. You have to pay cash. God forbid it's something really serious in 20, 30, $40,000, I don't, so if you have that kind of cash to give or your credit card has that kind of unlimit, uh, but yeah, um, you have to put out the cash. I had a friend of mine who had a wedding in Mexico. Uh, one of the uh, bridesmaids broke her leg, had to go. Uh, it cost her, uh, I think it was $12,000 to get the leg x-rayed and set. And because she needed surgery, she had to leave and get on a plane and go home. And then deal with all that stuff back at home. So, but that $12,000 could have been avoided if she had had travel health insurance. And again, the good way to do that is the person who's booking your travel, ask them about it. Or you could Google search it. Um, AAA, I, I believe, will, can, can supply that. On some of their tours, I'm not gonna say all of them because I don't know uh, if they do. But insurances are good things because they, Give us a worry-free relaxation time on our vacation. We don't have to worry about uh, these little things. Now, while traveling abroad, there's a couple things that I recommend and I do. I take my money and I put it in the safe that's in the hotel. Um, the ones that they have a keypad. If you have a large amount of money or large 
valuables like jewelry and those type of things, go to the front desk of the place you're staying and say, I would like these put into the house safe. You get a receipt form and you'll go get them as you need. Um, again, almost country, all countries that I've been to anyway, they take credit cards. A good thing to do is check your credit card and make sure that A, you get a current exchange rate, that B, you notify them that you're going out of country and you will be using the card so that they don't turn it down uh, and making sure that you have some cash, uh, whether it's everybody has a different comfortable level. I usually make sure I have about 500 to $1,000 in cash, just in case. And at that amount, you know, of course, if it gets stolen, it's, it, it, it's not good, but you're not losing five or $10,000. So uh, I put also my passport and my main wallet in that safe in the room. I take a picture of my passport, put it on my phone. I delete it after the trip is over because you don't want to leave that on your phone. God forbid you lose your phone. You don't want somebody to have all that information. But what, while I'm about taking pictures and I'm using my phone, I have my copy of my passport on there. God forbid somebody or something occurs and they ask for your identification. Here is a photo of my passport that is in the safe in my hotel. If you need to see the original, bring me to my hotel and I will produce it. Uh, and that has worked for me. I, I think that it's a safe thing unless you want to carry what they call a money belt or a safe carrier uh, that you can purchase online, uh, purchase at uh, AAA. I believe they have them in the stores. And that goes underneath your clothing. Uh, it snaps together. It's adjustable. And you can keep those certain uh, things that you need safe on that. And it's very, very hard for them to pickpocket those items or get those items from you. Now. If you are gonna carry a bag, I suggest a small um, uh, bag that could go either over your shoulder and across, but small in, in stature. Uh, and you could have one arm over for security. Uh, there are many countries where pickpockets uh, prey on women who hold their bags loosely in one hand, waving them, they'll come by and grab them. So the cross chest strap and small bag on the side is best. It's a smaller target for these thieves. It's also secured by your body and your arm. And men, be careful also. Do not have your wallet in your back pocket like most of us carry. I carry a little clip. I keep it in my front pocket, pocket and my main wallet that has additional cards, uh, health cards, information, that stuff in it. I keep my main wallet in that safe back of the room. The little clip is nice. You take hundred bucks with you and your credit cards and your driver's license. Uh, and it's in your front pocket, very, very hard uh, uh, to take. Uh, so you've got to be aware that these things are out there. Uh, and of course, uh, traveling groups is the best thing. Um, I like going on tours, uh, all the travels mapped out for you. Uh, once I get comfortable with an area, I, I do go back occasionally uh, on my own, but that's only after I've, I've experienced it, kind of know where the central places are that I need to know, uh, that type of thing. And again, that's another personal item. That's something that each one of us has to decide what we're comfortable with and what we're willing uh, to do. So, um, I wanna play this uh, last video for you. Um, this is uh, safety tips while traveling abroad. Some of the things I've discussed, uh, but I really, well, I watched this video and I, and I liked it. I thought it was, a, and it was, and it's not real long. Uh, it was it was good to, uh, to see. So let's see if we can hopefully uh, get this going. Hey yo, Jessica with Eagle Creek here. 
And today I wanted to talk with you about a very important but rarely discussed travel topic, and that is travel safety. If you've traveled a fair amount, you know that at times traveling can be uh, a little sketchy. So here are some tried and true tips. Number one, share your itinerary with your family and friends. Now I like to use Google Docs because I like to have my rough itinerary sketched out, but then also it's really easy to share with your family and friends. Number two, secure your passport. Pick yourself up an RFID blocker money belt or neck wallet. And stash your passport and your cards inside. Notice it's under my shirt. This is key. It's an undercover money belt, so you should keep it out of sight. Another good idea is to keep a photocopy of your passport with you in the unlikely event that you lose your passport. It'll be really helpful when you go to the embassy. Number three, cash money. Have you heard of traveler's checks? They're a thing of the past. Do not get traveler's checks. You do not need them. But what you do need is cash. And remember that there will be ATMs and there will be money exchanges where you're going. So you really only need to bring what you need for the road. And remember, we live in a digital age, so definitely contact your bank before you go in order to have access to your money while you're traveling. So contact them, let them know what countries you're going to and what your dates are so that they don't put a fraud alert on your card and actually cancel it, because that's really, really bad. All right, number four. Something I like to do is to check government travel sites before I go to sign up for travel alerts. And I like to do this if I'm traveling to a country that has a little bit of political instability or some health issues going on, just so that I stay informed. Believe it or not, the gear that you choose will actually help you to travel more securely. So definitely look for stuff that has lockable zippers. So both on your luggage, as well as on your day pack. Find yourself a TSA lock and then thread that through the central lock point as well as the zippers to keep anyone from being able to tamper with what's inside of your bag. So I find these useful if I need to check out of my hotel early but like my flight's not till later, people aren't gonna be able to get into my luggage at the front desk. And if I end up checking a bag, I always like to lock it. Tip number six, get yourself some gear that has reflectivity. This will be really helpful when you find yourself dashing across the street to catch a late night train. Tip number seven, bring a safety whistle. This one's awesome because it's actually integrated into the backpack, but that's just gonna help you in case you find yourself in any emergency situation. Finally, be smart. If you don't think that you should travel alone, don't. And if you find yourself in surroundings that you're just not comfortable in, get out of there. Find some people, find the authorities. But remember, you're traveling. So the whole point is to get outside of your comfort zone, to try new things. So be yourself, be curious, be respectful, and most importantly, be safe. All right, guys. Well, thanks for listening. I'll see you next time. Okay, recap and questions. So the things that we went over today is the different modes of travel, preparing and planning our trip. Let me stop sharing so I can see everybody again. There we go. There's everybody. Um, so we want to, you can't take it lightly. Planning, planning, planning is the key to a safe trip. You, If you plan ahead, you can be pre prepared for anything the road throws at you. Uh, you want to check, I liked her tip, and I did say it earlier, but I like her tip about che checking travel websites and government websites for uh, getting notifications if things change. You don't want to be stuck halfway and find out that you're in Paris and your next stop is in Germany, but there's some kind of uh, riots going on where you're going. So, so that is very, very important. Also, I like uh, the idea about the lockable suitcases. Um, domestically, I don't lock them uh, because TSA will just either cut your lock or if you have a TSA lock, they can open it anyway. So, uh, but when I travel abroad, I absolutely lock them. 
of my luggage. Okay, and the TSA locks, you can get that at almost any store, Lowe's, um, um, Home Depot, AAA, any of those that, that, uh, uh, that have um, uh, those type of things, uh, uh, travel stuff, uh, will we'll, uh, we'll have those locks. Um, good luggage makes for easy travel. Hack, that was the one thing I didn't really specifically talk about, and I just want to cover a little bit. When we pack, we need to specifically, if we have medications that we need uh, to have access to, you want to make sure that you take a day or two's worth in a separate container and keep it with you on the plane. Because if you get derailed or your bag gets lost, you'll have at least two days of medication. And it'll give you two days to either A, them find your bag, get you your bag, and or get on the phone to the pharmacy and have them ship it to you wherever you are. So packing. I'm a pretty simple logistic guy. I'm going to be away for uh, eight days. I pack eight pairs of underwear, maybe a couple extras just in case you swim and you, you change or you shower twice because you're super sweaty. So a couple extras of everything doesn't hurt. Uh, socks, uh, make sure I have comfortable shoes, make sure I have a nice pair of shoes too to go out and maybe some sandals. And then the appropriate clothing for where you're going to be. Check the weather. <laughs> we got caught going, uh, we were driving from New Jersey to Florida and we stopped in um, Savannah, Georgia. And the weather was beautiful all the way down. We got Savannah and ended up being 41 degrees that night. And all we had uh, was a light sweatshirt. And so uh, I had really said, Oof, I wish I had checked and just grabbed one layer heavy, uh, heavier. We were going to Florida where the weather was 70 every day. So we packed very light. So again, in that planning and that checking the weather, checking the, the websites, uh, packing properly, make sure if you're driving, make sure you have a, a, an umbrella. Make sure that you have a pair of jumper cables, just in case. Of course, if you're a AAA member, you can call uh, your, your AAA wherever you are. They'll come give you a jump. They'll even, if your battery is dead in shop, they'll put a brand new one in right on site for you. And I swear, I, I am not on the money end of it, AAA. I'm on the public service end of it. So I'm not really trying to sell you on it. I'm just saying these things are available. Uh, and uh, with that, uh, again, the packing, the planning, and then the executing is all part of, uh, of being safe. Uh, is there any uh, questions or any comments or even stories you'd like to share with the group? Feel free to unmute. Go ahead, uh, and you know, Evan, you have to uh, unmute, Evan. Yes, we got it. Thank you, Ron. Um, we have some uh, travel plans at the very end of the calendar year and the start in January. Um, does AAA have an outlook on the, uh, the current situation and future uh, expected situation with car rentals being uh, in some locations exceptionally costly? Heard yeah. some whole stories about Miami Airport being through the roof. I got, I got caught. That's a very, very good question. What's your name? I see Christine Evan. up here, but I don't think you're Christine. No, that, that's <laughs> our, I'm Evan. Evan Dobbins. All right. So, all right. I got caught in the middle of that. What happened was, as we started to come out of the pandemic, uh, the rent of cars, because they had to keep their overhead as low as possible, they started selling off their inventory. Mm -hmm. And what happened was, is that the travel kind of exploded in March. And, uh, and, and April and the renting of a car was, it was, it was insane. It was in the neighborhood, if I remember of $350 a day. That's so, right. yeah. So we believe that the uh, agencies will start to rebuild as time goes on and they start to recoup some of their losses uh, from COVID. And by December, I think you should be in pretty good, uh, pretty good um, um, space. I, I'll also say this, the same two weeks that I was going to be there, a friend of mine came back on the tail end for four days and got to rent a car very, very inexpensive by going to a different airport. 
instead of going into Miami or Fort Lauderdale, he went into West Palm. He found an offsite rental at it was, it was about 80 or $90 a day compared to the prices I was getting. Yeah. But mine was over a 12 day period. But it was ridiculous, anywhere from two to $3,000. So, uh, of course, we didn't do that. We just figured we wouldn't spend that in Ubers even if we tried. So, right. uh, but I'm hoping by December, where are you going if you don't mind me asking? Well, November, we have Arizona. And to your point, the um, airport in Phoenix is probably one of the most expensive traditional uh, locations we travel to for car rentals. But when you go on a price line or something else, you, you find offsite for like half the price. Yeah, so true. Some also, of them I've, I, I don't know if you guys belong to Costco or know somebody who, who yeah. does. Yes. Costco, believe it or not, has great prices. Yeah. They do. They have great prices on rentals. Yes. Uh, I know that AAA can get you a rental through Hertz and we get a discount. Um, yeah, it's never as cheap because I've tried through AAA. Also. I can't say that, but yeah, you, you I know. hit it on the head. Um, <laughs> you know, I, listen, I would never lie to you and say, oh, it's a grill. No, yeah. it, it hurts is pretty expensive. Uh, the only time Hertz has been inexpensive is when I go into, like you say, one of those price line or, or rentals.com or one of those, and you take a mystery car and you don't know what it is and you don't know what, it, what agency it is. And uh, for the most part, another thing, this is a great line of questioning. Thank you for bringing this up. I got stuck uh, at a rental place. They said, well, where's a, we need a copy of your driver's license. I mean, um, your insurance card, because I opted not to take the insurance. We were in, in the country. And um, they said, well, we need a copy of your card. I said, I got emails from you. It never said, make sure you have a copy of the card. Thank God my wife had gotten the app and actually got a card and had to email it to them. They had to go get it, print it out and come back. And, and that took an extra hour at the counter. So it was very frustrating. So it's always not a bad idea to either carry a picture of it mm -hmm. or actually make a photocopy of it and put it in your travel bag if you're renting a car because some places will ask for it, some places don't. Um, and uh, <laughs> I've used some of the real bad bargain ones. So I've gotten, gotten you know, caught without the proper stuff occasionally, so. So would you recommend on that thought process of uh, waiting later into the year before any car rental uh, agreement is uh, committed to? Yeah, I, yeah. it's too I, early. Absolutely. Uh, so I think the average is, is you wait till about 30 days before because you don't want to get caught too early and you don't want to get caught too late if, um, uh, if, if the, um, the demand goes up, especially when you go to warmer areas when it's cold here. Yeah. You know, that, that creates uh, an escape to warmer weather and, and the demand goes up. Yeah. So you got to be very careful of that. So at least 30 days ahead of time, understand what your, your rights are for cancellation. Mm -hmm. Because what you could do is four or five days before you leave, go on and see if you can get a better deal and cancel the other one. Mm -hmm. A couple of years ago, I saved three hundred dollars on a three-week rental in Florida by canceling the day before and finding a better rate. As long as you have that yeah. opt-out, yeah, it's very bad. Good job, excellent, excellent. I like to hear that. Very good. Okay, Ron, I had a question for you myself. Sure, Bob. Um, I'm sure you can give us advice. Airport parking. Do you mm -hmm. go any place? Do you take anybody's airport parking? Do you get the the wherever the cheapest. And when you're parking in an airport. Um, are the contents of your car um, uh, somehow secured in any particular way or is it just a free-for-all? What do you advise? <laughs> okay, um, <clears throat> very good question. Uh, I find that with, if you go to a place that has a secure yard, fenced in, gated coming in, gated coming out, your car is going to be pretty safe. Um, you don't want to leave anything in your car anyway. You know, you don't want to leave computers. Um, the thieves now um, actually have, it's an electronic device. They drive by your car and it, and it detects if you have a large battery item. And if you do, they assume it's a laptop and they break into your car and take whatever that item is. And if they see baggage, they'll take that too. So very good question, Bob. And, and here is what I do. I can only tell you what I do. I don't park at the airport because it's, 
very, very expensive. But I use an off-site parking uh, that has a website. I read their rules and regulations. They usually are not gonna cover any damage to your car. But if I have a nice car that I wanna bring there, I may wanna to go to a place that has covered parking available and pay extra. So it all depends on what your needs are. Um, I will give you, an, uh, for instance, uh, in uh, Philadelphia, there's an offsite parking uh, place that I use uh, and they shuttle you right over. They drop you right outside the door. It's pretty good. Same thing here in North, there's several of them. Parking Spot, uh, Jiffy Park, um, what's the other one? Park Plus, I, I think it is. Another good thing to do is go to group, uh, uh, Groupon. Go to Groupon and see airport parking in Philadelphia. They sometimes have Groupons that could save you 30% off the parking fees. Uh, I would say that most of the places are equally secure. Some places are better at picking you up in a timely fashion than others. And that's kind of hit or miss. And I don't want to disparage one over the other. Uh, but you do want to make sure that they, they have a secure yard. Uh, if you have, uh, you know, if you have to drive a very expensive car, you may want to bring your cover. If you have a cover, throw your cover on it. If they don't have covered parking. Uh, if you don't have a cover, you can ask for indoor or covered parking. It gets expensive, but it may be worth it, especially if you're going to be gone for two weeks. Uh, you don't want bird uh, droppings on your car eating through your pain of your very expensive car. So um, again, that's kind of an individual um, um, decision. Uh, but I would say that is part of that planning. You should be checking out what's available. Uh, I will tell you that uh, uh, Trenton, uh, Mercer County Airport, uh, I think it used to be $7 a day. It, or it used to be free, actually, when I first started going there. It went to seven. I believe it's up to $15 a day now. So again, check um, off season. It may be cheaper. Parking off site, there may be an off site uh, place that's less expensive. Uh, so um, that's in the planning stage. But that, Bob, great, great question. Um, anything else? Anyone else is welcome to uh, unmute. It is. <laughs> I think you have some satis you have some satisfied customers there, uh, Ron, um, and we appreciate the thinking and uh, the reinforcements of basics, which we're probably quick to forget because we're looking to go someplace and uh, get the right air uh, air miles or whatever discounts, and we're not thinking about necessarily this complete safety picture that we really should think, think about. And I uh, don't want to ask about horror stories of uh, people in travel because there are many, especially losing bags and things like that. And, mm -hmm. uh, which... it, happens, it happens more than, than we want to admit it does. Um, there's that land of the lost where all the bags go. Right. And I'm sure that there's airport personnel are just picking through it. But, you know, <laughs> as, an, as an ex police officer, I, I get a little cynical sometimes, but it's all, it's all in good fun. <laughs> Are you familiar with uh, using ATM machines in foreign countries? Is that a benefit versus- That's a very, uh, that's a very good question. Uh, the girl in the second video did mention that. Again, what you wanna make sure is that your card is gonna be usable over there. And most MasterCard visas are, are worldwide. Uh, here's a tip though. If you're going to spend a lot of money or a lot of time, say you go on a dream trip to Italy and you're going to go there for 16, 19 days, 21 days, and you know you're going to be using the card a lot, you want to make sure that you get a card. Even if you just apply for a card and get it for that trip and then cancel it out and charge it out later, one that's going to give you exact direct money market exchange rate of the day. Very, very important because if you go to the place, to get euros and you're cashing in American money for euros, they charge about four or 5% on top. AAA can get you money too, by the way, you order it in advance. Uh, and I think it's a one and a half percent charge. It's a lot smaller than what you would, airports are the worst. Never exchange money at the airport, um, never. Uh, just 
uh, the best things to do are to go to uh, uh, markets areas and ask where you can get exchange uh, money. Uh, and it's, it's usually fairly reasonable, but again, you're paying a four or 5%, maybe even 6% uh, exchange fee. Uh, so credit cards, uh, daily market exchange rates, very, very important to have on your card. Uh, my son actually got a card. Uh, he and I went to Scotland for a week and he got a card that had no ATM fees worldwide. That's great. Don't get, over there, you're gonna pay an ATM fee, five bucks or six bucks or whatever on every hundred euro in addition. So if your card is charging you higher than market rate and then you're paying ATM fees, you're, you're paying 10% on an exchange. It's, it's, it's really horrific. So just be aware of things. That's a great, another great question. All right. Yeah. Kevin. Kevin. One way. Yeah, I'm muted. Okay. Uh, exchange uh, at major hotel chains, uh, is that more or less the same type of penalty when, when they will uh, change money for you at, at the counter? In my experience is that, um, and I can only give you my experiences, is that if you go into a bank, they'll charge you a certain percentage and it's usually a flat percentage fee and that's it. You go to a hotel, it's usually much higher. The exchange rate is higher and then the fee. Okay. You know, uh, so uh, the, the best uh, thing I, I did, uh, I'm just gonna use Italy as, as, as a reference, is that I got, I think it was 500 euros. And at the time, I think it cost me $730 or something. And I had 500 euros. And the first two days I was using my cash Meanwhile, I'm looking at all these little exchange places and I'm looking at, at the exchange rate. Some were $1.29 American for a dollar um, euro. Uh, some were $1.33 for a dollar. So I found one that was one, like a $1.19. And I went there and I exchanged a whole bunch more money. Mm. Um, so if you have something to start you off, that's great. Um, but again, most places, most restaurants, um, most places will take your credit card. There'll be no additional fees in most places. I'm not saying all. Right. And if you have a good card that gives you exchange rate of the day, That's not really interesting. you can make out much better. Thank you. You're welcome. I have one last story if you want to hear it. Go sure. for it, Ron. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I, I'm just going to throw this out there. I uh, had uh, an American Express uh, gold card and my uh, uh, limit on it was, I think, 50,000. And uh, my wife and I were in Mexico and it was during a very, very bad downturn in the economy. I sold my house for $100,000 than I originally listed it for, but I had money in the bank. So we were at this resort and uh, this big vacation, they, they, they say, come, you know, check out this vacation thing. So um, we got a deal and I said to her, you know, for what we need, this is probably, this is, was ba way better than anything I had ever heard before. I said, let's do it. It had not only uh, three full, uh, all-inclusive weeks, 30 of them, but they had 120,000 RCI points a year, which is more than just about anybody could ever spend. I don't even spend 20 a year. Uh, and I'll just say that when I paid uh, on a credit card, they said, we'll take your credit card. They were desperate after I worked the deal. I saved $3,000 off the price that they wanted to finance by paying for it with my credit card that gave me the exchange of the day rate. So if you're going to make any big purchases like jewelry, which by the way, Europe is great for getting watches and, and those type, type of keepsakes and memories. If you're gonna spend money, that could save you hundreds or thousands of dollars. So uh, that being said, that's all I have, unless there's another comment or a question. Uh, I wanna thank you all for, for paying attention, thank you. Uh, for um, participating, and, and I wish you safe and happy travels. Thank you, Ron. Thank you, thank you Ron. We appreciate your... Uh, expertise and sharing all the information. Uh, we hopefully can we can retain all that information when it comes time to travel. Okay. So on of, uh, Thanks again. You can, by the way, you can go online. It's not as much fun. 
but you can go online and look up these things and really do a lot of research and refresh your memory. AAA has some stuff out on, on YouTube and there's those two videos that I showed you today. One was a AAA, one was another uh, seller of uh, baggage, uh, but it was good information. So I thought rather than listen to me talk the whole time, I had to break it up a little bit. So. Right. Good idea. Can I Bob, if you want to get in touch with me, if you want to do another webinar and another subject, reach out for me. If I can't do it, AAA, we may have somebody who can. Ron, can I be a, a, a temporary dinosaur and ask whether AAA still has a trip pick? <laughs> trip pick. They actually do, but they're now they're they're electronic. Oh, yeah. okay. you can print them out if you want. You can still come in and get them. <laughs> we still have maps. We'll get maps. Um, and, uh, and by the way, I don't know if there's any, I'm an avid bicyclist, if there's any bicyclists out there, believe it or not, uh, in the last couple of years, we added bicycle rescue. That's we'll send a tow truck to get you in 10 miles with your bike uh, to either your home or to a repair shop uh, or, or a place of uh, safety. So, so that's basic AAA or the AAA? That's basic. No, with basic comes with basic. Oh, wow. And there's no additional charge and it's a separate um uh, you know, amount of uh, responses, I guess they call them. Very Ron, good. speaking speaking of dinosaur questions, are maps uh, now a thing of the past and everything is digital or the paper is gone? <laughs> I I actually, I love maps. When I, when I first got out of school, I, I drove a truck for several years while I was going to uh, uh, other schools. And... Um, I love my Packstroms. They were they were they were my lifeblood, and I had a collection of them from up and down the East Coast. And I think that every person should learn how to read a map because yeah. there's something about being able to find it on your own on a map that is satisfying, and it also makes connections in your brain to where you came from, where you are, mm -hmm. how it looks as a whole. There's a lot of visual connections that go on, so I, I think it's well worth to look at a map. Uh, I go onto Google Maps a lot, and I scroll out and I look. I go, I look at a much bigger area and go, "Oh, I didn't know we're only 200 miles from there. Maybe I'm going to take a ride there one afternoon. Uh, maybe I'm going to go to Isle Morada from from uh, Fort Lauderdale because right. uh, it's a two-hour trip. You know, you, you look at these things. So I love maps, whether electronic or not. I love maps, uh, and of course. Uh, ways, maps, all those things. Uh, what I like about them is that they are up to the minute traffic. Yes. So if there's a crash, I've been saved many a times. And it's funny, I've, I've gotten to the habit now, I put it on even I'm just going to work for an hour drive because if there's a crash on the parkway, mm -hmm. I've got, you know, I, get, I could be stuck, I could be stuck for an hour just to get to the next exit to try to get off. So, um, it's worth the, it's, it's well worth using, even even on routine trips. I like it too, because it'll take you ways that you never thought. <laughs> yeah. So you get yeah. to know. Very good point. Very you're good. going to the same place. So Ron, can you still get maps or not? Yes, we still have maps in our, in our, in our AAA uh, stores, correct. Okay, you made my wife happy, good job. <laughs> All right, guys, listen, All right, have a thank great you. night. I, the summer is, is upon us. I think yesterday was the first day, wasn't it? Yesterday? Yes, yes it was. Yesterday. First day of summer. Let's have a great summer. Let's enjoy. Let's be safe. Let's have fun. And by the way, future travels, I'm in. I, I was trying to talk to my wife just last week into going to the Galapagos. There was a special through Gate 1. Can't say that too loud. Triple A might get mad at me. But there really? was a special... And I was trying to talk to her and she was, I don't think I'm ready to go to outside the country like that because you got to go to Ecuador and, yes. you know, it's one of those things. But but anyway, I'm excited about getting back in it and, and I hope you guys are too. And uh, just again, I'm going to wish you happy, safe travels. Thank you. Okay, Ron, thank you. On behalf of Temple Israel, we appreciate uh, your efforts here and you've added another level of expertise to our library. Thank you very That's much great. for taking the time to do this. You guys are welcome, and thank you for participating. You guys were great. Have a great night. Take care. Okay. Good night, everybody. Thank you. Bye.